Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Ernest Thayer. He lived from 1863 to 1940 and was an American writer uh, who is most famous for the poem that I'm going to read today. Every now and then I like to read a poem that is specifically for the younger listeners, for the kids. And today is my son Lucas's third birthday, so I figured today is a good day to read a poem for the kids. And this poem happens to be in the form of a story. And my boys love baseball, um, you know, in in the way that little kids do. And uh, it's baseball season now, so I thought that I would read Ernest Lawrence Thayer's Casey at the Bat. This may not be the most complicated of poems ever written, but it is one of America's best-known examples of comic verse. You'll be familiar with it, I I assume, Um, and if not, then... (laughs) memorize it. Uh, But here it goes. This is Casey at the bat. It looked extremely rocky for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to six with but an inning left to play. And so when Cooney died at first and Burroughs did the same, a pallor wreathed the features of the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest, with the hope which springs eternal within the human breast. For they thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, and likewise so did Blake, and the former was a pudding and the latter was a fake. So on that stricken multitude a death-like silence sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and the much-despised Blakey tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and they saw what had occurred, there was Blakey safe on second and Flynn a hug in third. Then from the gladdened multitude went up a joyous yell. It bounded from the mountaintop and rattled in the dell. It struck upon the hillside and rebounded on the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he'd lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt, t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt. And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed from Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheated sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the bleachers, black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone from the stand, and it's likely they'd have done it had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult, and he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew, but Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey would not let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, And now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere. And somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing. And somewhere children shout. But there's no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out.
This poem is silly in some ways, of course, but there's also a lot going on here that's really interesting. Um, it, it certainly is playing um, with some really classic poetic forms here. You've got the heroic couplet, for example, um, the ballad, even the elegy, um, in some ways, perhaps even the ode, um, if you want to stretch some of those definitions. But it's clear that Ernest Lawrence Thayer is playing with the various poetic traditions, um, presumably with which he was very familiar. Um, and, uh, you know, it takes the whole scene very seriously, even as it's making a comic moment out of it. I think sometimes the best comic writing you know, think about Woodhouse, for example. Uh, the best comic writing is writing where a ridiculous or um, essentially non-essential thing is taken seriously. So here, this is just a baseball game. Um, it doesn't even say that it's a playoff game or some kind of a championship game. It seems to be, you know, kind of any old baseball game. And it seems to be a minor league baseball game and, you know, um, not necessarily a high high level one. Um, and throughout the poem, the scene is treated as if it's, you know, uh, as if it's a great battle going on, as if we're on the verge of the battle of Agincourt or we're about to have the charge of the light brigade or the ride of Paul Revere or something. So I think in that way, it fits in nicely with some of those, those poems. Of course, those are these patriotic, um, these kind of odes to patriotism, these calls to, to courage. But there's also this narrative in this poem. Um, there's, <laughs> and the, the narrative that drives things forward that keeps us um, both amused and interested. But it doesn't end in in heroism. Um, and I've heard people, you know, make the case that this is one of the poems kids should read because you know they'll know it's okay to fail. And I mean, if you want to know it's okay to fail, you should just play baseball. I don't think you need this poem. But <laughs> but, um, but one of the things that I love about it is that you kind of know because of how seriously it's taking the whole scenario that he's probably, it's probably not going to end the way, (laughs) the way you want it to, or the way the fans want it to. Um, You you can kind of predict that from the, from the get go. And we, and it ends with such a ridiculous, you know, stanza um, that, that in some ways, you know, anybody who loves sports, like really loves sports and has that moment where it looks like it might go right. And then it doesn't, you know, there really is kind of a gut punch there, it, You know, it's heartbreaking in the way that sports can be heartbreaking, not truly heartbreaking, but you know, sports heartbreaking. And it really does kind of give you that gut punch. And for a moment you feel like, you know, this is the worst thing to happen, you know, and then you realize, well, no, that's, that's kind of silly. So it kind of plays with all of the, uh, the different, um, the different experiences, the different, uh, things that come with fandom or playing sports. Um, it puts them in their proper perspective. It mocks them in the right ways. It takes them seriously in the right ways. And it does that in a really nice poetic form that pays attention to to the form of the poem itself, but also to uh, past forms and, and uh, seems to be paying homage to a number of poetic forms. So, um, all right. This is a little longer, but I will go ahead and read it again. Um, it's a pretty quick read. So, if, you know, feel free to turn the podcast off now if you want, but I'll read it one more time. So here is Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. It looked extremely rocky for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to six with but an inning left to play. And so when Cooney died at first and Burroughs did the same, a pallor wreathed the features of the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest, with the hope which springs eternal within the human breast. For they thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the Bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, and likewise so did Blake, and the former was a pudding, and the latter was a fake. So on that stricken multitude, a death-like silence sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and the much-despised Blakey tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and they saw what had occurred, there was Blakey safe on second and Flynn a hug in third. Then from the gladdened multitude went up a joyous yell, it bounded from the mountain top and rattled in the dell. It struck upon the hillside and rebounded on the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when, responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat, no stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt, and while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed from Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. 
and now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the bleachers, black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone from the stand. And it's likely they'd have done it had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult and he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey would not let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere. Somewhere, hearts are light. And somewhere, men are laughing. And somewhere, children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.